Welcome everyone to join us with Just Commentary. So we're going to react to um, World War II over Simplify Part 1, of course. I'd like to thank you guys, of course, for requesting. I have a lot of requests about like the war and how the war affected the world and how things happen in the world. So I'm very happy to learn about these things and I'm very happy that you guys are requesting it so that I can do this video request. Of course, as I said, we're going to react to World War II Part 1. Of course, we reacted to World War 1 Part 1 and Part 2. We're not going to react to World War World War II Part 1. Thank you so very much. Let's go ahead. Let's see. This video was made possible by Skillshare. Skillshare. Churchill was a man with many talents. He yes. Was an artist, a butterfly Not bad. enthusiast, Ooh. and he had an unpublished manuscript about aliens. Clearly really? He was a man with an insatiable thirst for knowledge. Hmm. Maybe he could have loaded up his computer and logged on to <laughs> Skillshare, yeah. an online learning community <laughs> with more than 19,000 classes in design, Ooh. business, technology, and more. Perhaps he was considering a side career in fashion, hmm. but didn't know where to start. On Skillshare, he would find courses in fashion design and garment what? construction. That's or if he wanted to learn app design, to improve his photography, or just how to make a really good quesadilla. Aww. He would have found courses for all of these and more on Skillshare. Skillshare, <laughs> Skillshare gives you access to high-quality classes taught by genuine experts wow. working in their field. I work heavily with animation, I and will, I was genuinely blown away by the number of really useful this. courses available to me. Like this class full also. of tips and tricks for creating vector art, or this wow. one for creating character walk cycles. For an annual subscription, Not Skillshare bad. is under $10 a month. And if oh, you'd like you. to try it out first, Skillshare. then I've got a deal just for oversimplified viewers. Awesome. The first 1,000 people to use this link, which can be found in the description, will get their first two months of Skillshare free. for just 99 oh, cents. Be sure free. to try it out using the link in the description and learn something new today. Now, oh. without further ado... Let's get to this sh the, the, the show. It's 1902. Hmm. A young 1902. man by the name of Benito Mussolini moves from Italy to Switzerland to avoid oh. military service. Okay. He gets big into socialism, working for trade unions, writing for... Yeah, you know, why is very specific and like that? European monarchies, the whole shebang. This gets him in a bit of trouble with the Swiss police, so he gets arrested, Ooh. sent back to Italy, set free, returns to Switzerland, what? is arrested again, goes back to Italy again, completes Bro. his military service after previously avoiding it, and then after <laughs> a brief stint as an elementary school teacher, he finally returns to work as an avid socialist. His speeches and journalistic abilities made him famous among Italian socialists. He was anti-war, so when Italy <laughs> colonized Libya in 1910, he rioted and got arrested. Okay. World War I came along, and once again he protested Italy's involvement. But then he thought, wow. wait a minute, this war could bring about the social climate needed to overthrow European huh. monarchies and bring about the socialist revolution everywhere. And suddenly he was pro-war. Yeah, the war. socialists didn't like his new pro-war stance, so they oh, kicked him Ooh, out of the shoot. So then he said, you know what? I'm done with socialism. We need something new, not based on class divisions tearing us apart, but hmm. based on unity through nationality. We'll conquer the Mediterranean and reunite all Italian peoples just like the days of the Roman Empire. I'll call it fascismo and what? It'll guide the Italian nation fascismo. to greatness. Fascismo. That's all well and good, Mr. Mussolini, <laughs> but what kind of haircut am I giving you? Let's go with... Bold. Bold. <laughs> I was right! <laughs> <laughs> Get his face. <laughs> World War Two. Italy had been on the winner's side in World War One, uh -huh. and they hoped they were going to get a lot yeah, out of it. True. But in the end, they only got a little, and they felt Ooh. cheated. On top of that, a bad economy and weak governments meant that the Italian people were a little unhappy. So when Mussolini came along and said that huh. he could fix everything, his fascist movement gained a lot of support. Head. In 1922, he went to the king and said, "Make me prime minister, or I'll make me prime minister." Ooh. And the king said, "You and what army?" This army. Ooh. Fair enough. Then he went about establishing a dictatorship with himself at its center. What? Europe had its first fascist dictator. Next up, Germany. Ooh. Germany had been on the loser's side, and they got absolutely wrecked by the Treaty of Versailles. They lost territory, had to demilitarize the Rhineland, had to reduce their army to just 100,000 men, couldn't have an wow. air force, had to pay the Allies a huge amount of money that it didn't have, and a new rule was established that every Englishman withheld the right to walk into the center of Berlin, pick out any German they wanted, and spank the hell out of them. What? I made that last one up, but it helps you understand how all this felt to Germans. On top of that, a bad economy and weak governments meant that when a small angry man with a silly mustache came along and said that he could fix everything, Whoa. the German people loved it. Hitler had been a soldier yeah. during World War I, and he was yeah. crazy patriotic, and nobody yes. was madder than him about Germany's hmm. humiliation. He helped start a new political party, and in 1923, we he learned some of this already, but awesome. And then he got arrested. But his popularity grew and grew. And, and in grew. 1933, the hmm. president made him chancellor. He believed he was Germany's great destined savior. <laughs> and he went full megalomania, establishing a dictatorship with a self added center. Of Europe course. Had fascist hmm. dictator number two. Hitler and Mussolini had a lot of the same ideas. But more importantly, they had the same enemies. And I they started never to get heard along. of Mussolini. Anyone before. else want to be friends? Franco? No? Ooh. You good? I do. Who's that? 
It's Japan, oh, wow. and they've taken over northern China. Let's rewind a bit. Japan had isolated itself from the rest of the world for over 200 years until the Americans showed up oh, and said, you're going to trade with us and you're going to like wow. it. Then the Western powers imposed a bunch of unequal treaties, meaning Japan's economy was bust. They also had no natural resources, hmm. so they decided to go get some. They went to war with China to gain a sphere of influence over Korea, and they took wow. a bunch of China's stuff. But then the West said, hey, cut that out. And since <laughs> Japan couldn't take on the West, they said, okay, I guess we'll just go home. Wait a minute. What are oh, Taking whoa. advantage of a weakened China and setting up spheres of influence. But I was the one who weakened them. We know. And you guys didn't let me have anything. Uh -huh. We know. That seems unfair. We know. We think so. Oh, shoot. Okay, see ya. So Japan thought, screw this, and went to war with Russia, and stunned everyone by actually winning. What? They fully annexed Korea, but they didn't stop there. In World War I, they took Germany's colonies and islands in Asia. And then in an incident that was maybe staged by the Japanese army, a bomb blew up a Japanese train in Manchuria, giving them an excuse to launch an invasion and take over. Whoa. So here's the situation. Nazi Germany, fascist Italy, and Japan all believe they're racially superior, all feel hostility towards the Allies, and Look how big these other countries are. take over more stuff. And so they did. Let's start with Germany. Hitler hated the Treaty of Versailles, and now he was ready to begin on doing it. Yikes. In complete violation of the treaty, the first Luftwaffe squadrons were set up, <laughs> conscription was introduced, and he pimped up his army. The Allies did nothing. <laughs> then Hitler sent his army back into the demilitarized Rhineland, giving orders to immediately retreat if the Allies showed up. The Allies did nothing. With his military re-strengthened, he wow. could now move on to step two. He wanted to word. rapidly really? increase the Aryan population, <laughs> and to do so, he needed Lebensraum. Or in other words, he would have to take over the world, oh. but for now, a good portion of Europe would do. And he began eyeing up his neighbors. The Allies finally started to get worried, so they implemented a fairly useless diplomatic strategy called appeasement. And it mm. went a little something like this. Oh. Hitler would say, I want that thing. And the Allies would say, you can't have that thing. <laughs> okay, you can have that thing, but no more. I want that thing. And repeat. In 1938, Hitler's army <laughs> marched into Austria and just took it with no resistance. Boom, this is Germany now. Next, he demanded to be given the Sudetenland, an area of Czechoslovakia with many ethnic Germans. Wow. The Allies held a meeting with Hitler in Munich and said, Look, we're going to give you what you Hang on. This huh. meeting is about my territory. Exactly. Welcome to the meeting of too. Of course. Anyway, we're going to give you what you want. What? Really? Yeah. Just like that? Yep. What's the catch? Just sign this piece of paper promising you won't invade the rest of Czechoslovakia. Okay. Then Chamberlain returned home victorious, waving his signed piece of paper in the air, declaring crisis <laughs> to be averted and the continuation of world peace, and we built a statue of Chamberlain in his honor, and every day on the 30th of September we celebrate Chamberlain that Hitler's invading the rest of Czechoslovakia. <laughs> what? He's invading the rest of Czechoslovakia. What do you expect? Oh. What do you expect to? You lied to me. What do you, what do you expect? <laughs> And Hitler, not to be outdone, Mussolini also wanted to get in on the action. He thought to himself, isn't there a not yet colonized nation oh, which gosh. is so underdeveloped that the people would be defending themselves against our tanks with literal bows and arrows and wooden spears? Oh. Oh, there is? Fantastic. Oh, boy. And so he took it. Italy also wanted to control the entrance they to just the Indian Sea, so they occupied Albania. Then, wow. in another incident which was maybe staged by the Japanese, gunfire was exchanged by Japanese and Chinese troops at the Marco Polo Bridge. And the Japanese launched yet another invasion against China. Whoa. They swept through Beijing and Shanghai, and then advanced through the Yangtze Valley to China's then capital, Nanking. It was here that saw the worst of Japan's shocking atrocities committed against the Chinese people. Whoa. Back in Europe, Germany and Italy made their relationship status official by signing the Pact of Steel. Then, huh. Hitler turned his eyes towards Poland and the oh hated boy. Polish corridor splitting Germany in two. At this point, the Allies really had to put their foot down, and they warned <laughs> him that an invasion of Poland would mean war. Hitler had planned do to continue it. his advance eastward, but he didn't want to end up fighting a war on two fronts. So for huh. now, he made an alliance with Stalin, saying, How about we both invade Poland and split it between the two of us, oh and boy, I definitely Stalin. won't not refrain from not betraying you sometime <laughs> in the future. Don't trust Sounds... Red, untrue. Good. Wow. This new line stunned the West. On the 1st of September 1939, German troops entered Poland, and Britain and France declared war on Germany. Wow. The Poles fought hard, but they were no match for the two giants crashing down on them from either side. Then oh came a period known as the Phony War, where everyone just sort of sat around not doing much. <coughs> The French had launched a small invasion into the Saarland, but they Whoa. maintained mostly defensive positions, and after a while, decided to just turn around and call it a day. Hmm. Speaking of France, the French were still super proud of their victory in World War I, and they hadn't really moved on from it. Hmm. They still used horses, they dispatched messages by motorbike instead of using radio, orders from the commander-in-chief were usually pretty vague, and the troops were Tritulous. rarely inspected. They drew a line of defenses along their German border, but didn't bother extending it all the way to the channel, and they wouldn't launch artillery strikes against Germany out of fear of being retaliated against. 
in a war. Boy. They didn't want to attack the enemy. And at first the UK wasn't much better. Chamberlain still naively hoped that the war could be ended diplomatically. Instead of bombing raids, the RAF dropped propaganda leaflets over German oh. cities, which one air marshal was... said likely did nothing but provide the continent with toilet paper for the duration of the war. They also only sent 200,000 men to France, while the French had mobilized millions. Both Britain and France wanted to avoid a repeat of the First World War, and so they wanted to keep the war as far from home as possible. So they turned their eyes north, towards Norway. Wow, neutral Sweden right was exporting there. iron ore to Germany through neutral Norway. So the Allies asked them if they could please stop exporting iron ore to Germany. But this request was refused. Then the <laughs> Soviet Union attacked Finland. So the Allies said, how about we land troops in Norway and move them across Sweden to go help out your good pal Finland, and along the way maybe take control of all your arm fields. But Norway and Sweden still said no. So the wow. UK mined the waters around Norway to force any transport ships into international waters, and they what? also attacked a German tanker they found in the area. Hitler realized what the Allies were up to, and he quickly moved to secure his supply of iron ore. He launched an invasion through Denmark into Norway. The Allies rushed to land troops this to keep along the coast, but Germany upper. had taken control of Norway's airfield, and their air superiority decided the fight. The Whoa. Allies had to retreat. After this slightly embarrassing failure, Chamberlain resigned and was replaced with Winston Churchill, who had a slightly Churchill. different approach to dealing with the I Germans. That name. Hitler's overall strategy was similar to Germany's First World War strategy. Attack France, defeat France, knocking out the UK in the process, huh. then turn on the Soviet Union and win the war. During the phony war, the Allies had given wow. Hitler time to prepare his forces. Now, he was ready to attack. The Allies had wanted to place troops in Belgium, <laughs> but Belgium had refused. And in a move oh, that surprised pretty much no one, Hitler launched an invasion to get around France's defenses. The Allies charged into Belgium at full speed to meet the German invasion head on. And it looked like a repeat of the First World War was Whoa. coming, but this time, Hitler had a trick up his sleeve. Blitzkrieg. As the Germans advanced, they sent thousands of refugees westward, slowing down the Allies. Then, oh to the south, the French had left the Ardennes, an area full of hills and forests, pretty underdefended because they thought it was naturally impenetrable. Well, the Germans were about to penetrate it with everything they had. They smashed 50 Wehrmacht divisions through and encircled the Allied armies at light speed. The best of the Allied forces were now trapped. The Germans squeezed in from all sides, taking out France's best armies and nearly wiping out the British too. But they managed to make a desperate last-minute escape at Dunkirk, with British civilian ships even making the perilous journey to bring their young men home. With most of the French forces depleted, the Germans breezed through. Really? Hitler, Paris and France fell. What the Germans couldn't do in World War I, Hitler had done just like that. <sighs> Hitler hoped that with the fall of France, the UK would also lose hope and sue for peace. But quite annoyingly, it didn't. Never and surrender. To secure the Western huh. Front. So he tried to force them into submission with mind games. <laughs> the UK were now all alone and Hitler wanted to emphasize that. First of all, just before France fell, Italy finally declared war on the Allies, making the UK's situation even worse. Oh boy. Next, instead of just occupying all of France, Hitler occupied the coastal areas for defense, but allowed France to continue its existence as a German puppet state. This way, it looked like the <laughs> UK's case. old ally had decided to switch sides. Hitler also hoped that the UK wouldn't attack any of her old allies' navy bases or colonies in Africa, giving Hitler wow. an extra line of defense to the south. But the UK made sure to respond to this by sailing down to France's navy base in Algeria and wrecking a bunch of ships. So have at it. Hitler then began laying down plans wow. for an invasion of Great Britain. Before Whoa, German troops could land on British shores, he would first Hitler aid air and naval superiority place. across the channel. Waves of German bombers came, while the completely outnumbered RAF worked bravely around the clock in an attempt to quell what? the German attacks. At first, the Luftwaffe targeted British ports and coastal facilities. Then it attacked RAF bases, crippling the RAF's ability to defend the nation. And it looked like Hitler's Great British Invasion was coming. But then, Churchill ordered a small, pretty insignificant bombing raid over Berlin. It didn't do much damage, but Hitler was furious, and he immediately Whoa. ordered the Luftwaffe to refocus its attacks on oh, no, no, targets in no London. Way. Children were sent off to the countryside, away from their parents to avoid danger, and frequent trips to air raid shelters became a daily occurrence. But British morale held firm. Smiling, knitting, lounging casually, these people <laughs> Balls of steel. <laughs> this refocusing on London also gave the RAF breathing space to reorganize, so Hitler kind of shot himself in the foot there. Ooh. <laughs> Just a foot from there. Finally, the Luftwaffe sent one massive all out attack on London, and the RAF successfully repelled it, destroying many of the German aircraft and placing air superiority firmly in British hands. Wow. Hitler's invasion had to be postponed, but the bombing of British cities continued for some time. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Okay, so that was part one. Part 2 is up next, which I'll be reacting to. Wow, so Hitler was all over the place. Hitler really wanted to take over the world. Hitler was really trying to. One man. I did, I enjoyed learning about him and how he um, grew up and what led to his, you know, idea of, of how he was. Um, but Hitler was really trying his best. Really trying his best. But this invasion thing was a serious thing back then. Of course, I don't think this invasion thing can happen now. There may, if there would be a war, God forbid, it might be over resources and um, human, humanitarian crisis 
as an excuse if you ask me um but of course and um, thank you for requesting this one we're gonna react to part two i've got like the american version american Re Revolu Revolu revolution Re resolution revolution revolution <laughs> thank you so very much thank you so very much guys for requesting part one of course don't forget to subscribe like the video guys share it and thank you so very much bye guys